Hi, everybody. Dr. Daniel. And today I'm talking about do's and don'ts of migraine management. Well, migraine is a complicated medical problem, which is thought to be genetic in origin and familial linked. If it's not handled properly with medication and way of living, it can be a terrible, disabling, chronic neurologic problem. What are the do's and don'ts of my managing migraine? First consider that persons with migraine are born with a special sensitive brain, a brain that's unlike others and which reacts to many of the vicissitudes of life that do not affect their innocent brothers and sisters who are born without the migraine gene. The migraine brain reacts to sleep, bright light, heat or warming up, stress or lack of stress, loud sounds, certain odors, red wine, certain foods, or the lack of food for missing meals or fasting. Why don't migraine patients treat with prescription drugs? Some fortunate migraineurs can get adequate treatment from just two aspirin and a nap, but they're the lucky ones who are usually rare, and most migraine-affected persons do better with doctor-prescribed drugs and following their doctor's advice on how to live with migraine. Other fortunate migraine patients can get by with over-the-counter drugs like Ecotrin, which is an aspirin-caffeine combination drug, taking Tylenol or one of the NSAIDs, and that means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen. The problem here, though, is the use of any tryptin, NSAID, Tylenol, or Ecotrin more than two days a week could cause the development of chronic migraine due to medication overuse headache. And it could also happen with other drugs that really should never be used in migraine treatment, such as opiate narcotics, uh, butalbital drugs. And it can even happen with tryptins, which are appropriate to be used if you take 10 days a month of those drugs. According to the International Classification of Headache Disorders, version 3, chronic migraine is defined as 15 or more headache days a month, eight of which have migraine features, such as being moderate or severe, one-sided, throbbing, and limit activity and puts you down, and are associated with nausea, vomiting, and sensitivity to light and noise. Episodic migraine is less than 15 headache days a week. However, there was a reluctance of migraine patients to try or to stay on long-term medications that would help them. First drug t- tried does not always work for migraine patients. Many times, they just have to hang on and try other drugs till they find something that'll work for them. Since 25% of women and 6% of men have migraine, and looking at the other side of that data would report that 75% of women and 94% of men do not have migraine and do not have to worry about living the migraine lifestyle or treating with effective medication. Many migraine patients are reluctant to use research-validated therapy. A survey in 2020 by the Health Union of 4,700 migraine patients found that in one of out of four, or 26%, were using a preventive calcitonin gene-related protein. And I'm going to abbreviate that and further talking as a CGRP medication. And these have been advertised in magazines on TV, and people have heard about them in the last several years. And these drugs are named Amovig, Ajovi, and Galati, Oyavipti. And that's down in patients from using 29% in 2019. So the number dropped from 29 to 26% of persons were taking a drug like that. And I'm going to use this uh, health union survey and refer to it throughout this talk for a little bit here. Now, the migraine timing cycle says there are four steps in the migraine timing cycle. It's important to understand this. To understand how the new CGRP drugs work, it's helpful to understand this migraine timing cycle. I have a picture of this on this blog article at drmigraine.com. The first step of the migraine timing cycle is trigeminal nerve inflammation by the brain stem. The second step occurs at 20 to 40 minutes into the migraine when the ganglia, the nerve, and artery in the brain start to release the three neuropeptides, neurokinin A, substance P, and CGRP. 
The third step occurs about two hours after release of these chemicals, which is meningeal artery vasodilatation. And step four is chemical inflammation of the thalamus, which is called the brain pain center. And those are the steps in migraine. So these CGRP antibodies work by blocking the third step here, the, the release of CGRP, one of the central neurochemicals involved with an attack of migraine. A recent article posits that Botox injections also may block the release of CGRP as well as block the transmission of C and A sensory fibers in the human brain. In the Health Union survey, 11% of patients were using Ubrevly or Neurotech, which are new acute therapy CGRP drugs to treat migraine. Although the pharmaceutical creators of the new CGRP drugs, such as Eli Lilly, Teva, Amagen, and other drug companies have aggressively marketed CGRP medications and even given the drugs away free to get people to try them, sales growth has been slow. Only Amavig and Imagality are used by at least 10% of migraine patients. Many migraine patients, if they're going to take anything, still use the older, cheaper preventive medications for migraines such as amitriptyline, propranolol, Depakote, topiramate, or Botox. Amitriptyline and topiramate were most used according to this survey. Or else they would use one of the seven triptans as acute therapy, which are cheap and the generic drugs. And two of them, subcutaneous semitriptan 6 milligrams and 5 milligrams zolmatriptan, work faster in 10 minutes, are highly effective given a headache free experience for 70 to 80 percent of migraine patients in two hours. So the triptans are still the best drug for acute therapy of migraine. And five of the oral triptans have onset at 30 minutes while frovatriptan and nirotriptan start working in one to two hours. They're really considered different kind of drugs that are not the best for acute therapy of the triptan um, gang of drugs here. The speed of treating or onset of the R of the headache part of a migraine is important in successful therapy. The Health Union survey reported that most migraine patients knew about CGRP inhibitors. 43% of them had tried a preventive CGRP drug, but most of them stopped after taking them for a short while. In the office management of migraine patients, they need a lot of discussion, hand-holding, explanation, and long-term follow-up to successfully educate and treat their migraine problem. I know of headache practices where the main neurologist only sees the new headache patient for the first visit, and another visit occurs 12 months later as they farm the patient out into physician assistants or nurse practitioners for the rest of their term visits. Now, the four different preventive CGRP drugs and the seven triptans, well, you can also consider DHE by nasal spray and intramuscular administration and timolol eye drops give migraineurs many choices for acute treatment. Also, 2020 brought out three acute treatment drugs for migraine called lasmetadenin, also the name brand is Rayval, Remigepent, which is Nertec ODT, and Ergopipent, which is Ubrevly. These are the first of kind medications in a new class of CGRP acute migraine treatment drugs, which are now name brand only, so they're more expensive than the generic tryptin drugs, and they do not work as well as tryptins for effective acute therapy, but can be used in patients with cardiovascular restrictions, which is not recommended for tryptin therapy. Preventive type CGRP, drug, CGRP drugs are used by 58% of patients according to the Health Union Report. And these patients had less head pain, and half of them reported they did not react to loud noises or bright lights as dramatically. Migraineurs who had heard of preventive CGRP medications had not tried them, cited several reasons why. 44% said their doctor had not recommended it. 27% were concerned about side effects. 21% were concerned about long-term safety. 19% said they could not afford them, and 14% said their insurance would not cover CGRP preventive drug treatment. Now, drug makers of CGRP preventive drugs often make migraine patients who want to use them fail. First one, and sometimes the second, or the older 
want to try one of the older preventive drugs like amitriptyline and propranolol before they will allow the patient to use one of the new CGRP drugs. They've got to fail the old drugs. Also, CGRP medications are not cheap. Eight doses of Nurtec for an acute therapy CGRP treatment drug costs over $1,000 without insurance. And nearly half of patients surveyed were still using triptans or over-the-counter pain medicines for migraine relief. Why do successful persons with migraine follow their neurologist's lifestyle advice? Well, this is interesting. The main reason here is that they found the migraine lifestyle works for them. It's an important part of the therapy program of migraine. Migraine is a genetic, neurological condition that has a strong familial link. 12% of the world's population has migraine, and women have three times more migraine than men do. Migraine is the most frequent medical condition for women, and it comes with the menstrual cycle in over half of women. 99% of headaches are either tension-type headache or migraine. And it's said that 70% of headaches are tension-type headaches, but about 30% are migraine. Less than 1% of headaches are something else. So migraine without aura comprises 70% of the migraine patients and migraine with aura, 30%. Migraine is the seventh most disabling condition among, among all diseases and the leading cause of disability among all neurological disorders. Persons with migraine need to learn how to treat it. Yet studies show that 56% of persons have migraine and have never been given a medical diagnosis by a doctor. Could migraine be improved by paying close attention to lifestyle issues? This is a question with a certain answer. Lifestyle issues for migraine prevention are important and should be performed by all persons with migraine. These lifestyle suggestions do not just help migraine, they also improve general health and longevity. The treatment of migraine is doing the lifestyle, providing acute therapy medication at the onset of the migraine attack, and preventing medicine for migraine patients with frequent attacks. These ideas are basic, dogmatic, and like they gotta be done. Next part of this talk will be about caffeine is a double-edged sword. Now you can't see this, but in my blog article, I have images of the usual slowly caffeine-addicted patient, and this is a picture from a, an old-timey movie showing Dr. Jekyll slowly over several pages turning into Hyde. It's a joke, but it shows what happens to persons who take too much caffeine. They get kind of addicted to it. Most persons like to drink caffeine, although it's an addictive drug, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, version 5, drinking caffeine can be a very pleasant experience for most people. The problem is that caffeine is a vasoconstrictor and can aggravate migraine or give medication of use headache if too much is used. This issue is especially important to persons with migraine. The American Headache Society has stated that caffeine is the number one drug in America causing an increase in the intensity and frequency of migraine. Caffeine use is confusing because many people know that caffeine may be used to treat headache for acute therapy, and they need to learn that if taken frequently more than two days a week, it can cause medication or use headache, previously called rebound headache. As a neurologist and headache doctor, I know that many people with migraine do drink some caffeine, and they get by with it and probably do okay, but it's the slow, sneaky, addictive quality of the drug that bothers me as a doctor, and I think bothers many migraine patients. I mean, persons don't consider caffeine as a drug. They'll be taking two or three doses of caffeine a day, and then on top of that, they'll take their headache medicine. So overall, I advise my new patients to not drink caffeine. My heart sinks when I greet a new headache patient, and they sit down uh, placing their Starbucks 16-ounce Grandy coffee next to them on the table because I know it contains an exceedingly high dose of 550 milligrams of caffeine and during the patient's history will be an important mistake that they're making in their lives. Diet issues. Avoid fasting or missing a meal. A small breakfast will suffice, but usually for most young women who feel the offices of neurologic headache doctors all over the world, the advice to eat breakfast will be met by a vacant look and denial many times. Did you know that the word breakfast means quote, to break the fasting of sleep, question mark, end of quote. If you do not eat and without your knowing it, your pituitary gland will sense your low blood sugar and send out a hormonal signal that will cause vasodilatation of your cerebral arteries 
and start your hungry headache migraine. Three meals a day is advised by all medically accepted weight loss programs like Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers, but my experience is that most mothers will feed their children three days a week, but not themselves. Exercise. The American Heart Association is recommended for adults. Um, in, in the comment I have is here is a straight copy and paste note from the American Heart Association website. So their recommendation for adults is get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous aerobic activity or a combination of both preferably spread out through the week. Also moderate to high intensity muscle strengthening activities such as resistance or weights on at least two days per week. Spend less time sitting. Even light intensity activity can offset some of the many risks of being sedentary. And we gain even more benefits by being active at least 300 minutes or five hours per week. And you increase the amount and intensity gradually over time. These above recommendations for general health are good, but did you know that one may improve migraine, anxiety, panic disorder, depression, tension, headache, and sleep problems with aerobic exercise? There are hundreds of scientific articles over the past 20 years proving that exercise works for headache therapy. Aerobic exercise is dance aerobics, jogging, cycling, swimming, uh, walking, rowing, walking fast, cross-country skiing, and stair-stepping. It's not slow walking, lifting weights alone, stretching or playing most games like tennis or racquetball because you're sitting or standing for part of the time. And if you're already exercising and still have bad headaches, consider increasing the aerobic part of your exercise program. Is exercise something you could do yourself to take control of your headaches? It takes determination, time, and effort. And just an aside here, several years ago, a Mayo Clinic cardiologist said that um, most of Americans have quit smoking, many of them have, but that sitting, in terms of effect on heart disease, is the new smoking. Overweight can increase the frequency of migraine attacks. Some migraine patients get a workout headache if they get hot. If this happens to you, then try to work out so you don't get too hot. Exercise in front of a fan or an air conditioning. You could take a little ibuprofen, etc., and a half of a tryptin drug before you work out. Remembering to limit painkillers and tryptins to no more than two days a week. If you still get a workout headache, then consider trying swimming. Adequate sleep. Migraine persons often do not sleep well. 50% of migraine patients are depressed, or 40% have GAD, which is generalized anxiety disorder, both of which have insomnia as one of the cardinal symptoms. Regulate your sleep. Set your sleep-wake cycle to rise and go to sleep at the same time every day, even through the weekend. Adults should sleep between 7-8 hours every night. The human brain has a cycle set for through the pineal gland, of the sleep-wake cycle that's set. And if you mess it up, you have trouble with that. You should wake up early on Saturday and Sunday morning so you won't get that Saturday morning or Sunday morning headache. And oversleep, avoid oversleeping Saturday morning or falling asleep for that seductive two-hour nap on Sunday afternoon. Set an alarm for a 20, 15-minute short energy-restoring nap. If you never learned how to take a short nap, then learn it. It can be done. Or else, at best, you could try what's called a body rest where you lie there with your eyes closed for 15 minutes. There are stages of sleep. Most persons with migraine only get to a light stage of sleep. So they're stage one, two, three, four sleep. Migraine patients are in stage one or two. They don't get into deep sleep. Every research paper amazingly, mainly has shown that. Too much sleep or not enough sleep can set off a migraine. Unwind at the end of the day. Listen to soothing music, take a warm bath, read a favorite book. Quit reading all those emails that always just keep trickling in. Avoid news addiction. It'll only make you nervous and intense. Hard exercise, big meals, caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol can interfere with sleep. Minimize distractions. Save your bedroom for sleep and sex. Do not watch television or take work materials to bed. Close your bedroom door. Use a fan to muffle distracting noises. Be sure that none of your medication can interfere with sleep. Look up drug side effects of all the medicine you're taking on the internet. Dealing with stress. <clears throat> Many patients I talk with deny having any stress. Talk with them is like, to them, it's like somebody else's problems, but not mine. They either don't understand what stress is or discuss it with a 
regular want to discuss it with a regular non psychiatric doctor, me, a neurologist. These are the stressful events in life change of environment, leaving home to go to school or start a new job, death, accident, or major illness of a parent, grandparent, sibling, close friend, spouse, or sweetheart, birth of a new child, loss of a job, starting a new job, financial stress, starting school, stress, uh, school tests and quizzes, mortgages due, old bills, unexpected financial responsibilities. We can all go through these types of things. They are the ebb and flow of our lives. Therefore, learn to talk over your daily life problems with your friends, family, preacher, priest, your spouse, or rabbi. Develop a support system to sustain you in life built up of key people that are there for you when you need them. Plan time to relax and spend on hobbies or interests. Normal people have hobbies, which is something you do for fun and relaxation that is creative and not goal or money-making oriented. Children and family are not hobbies. Please look up the word hobby in the dictionary if you think this. I've heard that answer many times. Turn off that cell phone, computer, or iPad and get a life. Plan three-day weekends several times a year rather than one two-week holiday in August. And leave that depressing, stressful job or get counseling and try to change a personal relationship that is causing problems. Try controlling breathing, family or personal counseling. You can learn how to do CPD, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. It can be helpful for reducing anxiety. See my W.W.W. Dr. Migram articles on depression, anxiety, sleep, and CBT. Avoid overtreatment with medication. New subjects. Do not take too much caffeine or over-the-counter drugs tripped into painkillers for headache. <clears throat> the migraine process generates neurochemicals which are released in the brain that inflame the thalamus, the trigeminal nerve, the cerebral arteries. And these neurochemicals stay in the body three days, and once they inflame the brain, they are released repeatedly every time painkillers, caffeine, Advil, Tylenol are consumed, starting a process of continued headache. I once saw a man who told me he had been taking 10 Excedrin migraine pills for over 50 years. That's 10 times 65 milligrams each one. That's 650 milligrams a day of caffeine. And he had a headache all that time until I convinced him to stop Excedrin. Then his headaches cleared up. There's no data that open narcotics help migraine headaches. They just cause problems should not be used for rescue treatment. The United States is now going through a change in the use of opioid narcotics and barbiturate drugs since they cause people to die in their sleep. They're addictive and cause medication abuse headache problems. There's never any place in neurologic treatment of migraine to use opioid drugs like hydrocodone or tramadol or barbiturate drugs like butalbital, all of which are narcotics, possibly addictive, but notorious for causing medication abuse headache. Narcotics should be reserved only for persons who are in severe pain and near the end of life they should be used for acute trauma or surgery, but only for a short time and then stop. Death of opioid narcotics is a top problem now in America and is a common problem causing withdrawal of physicians' medical licenses. Butavitol found in Fioranol Fioraset drugs has been banned in every country of the world except Canada and the United States because it causes medication obvious headache. And we can't get rid of uh, butavitol in America. Politics won't do it. The word narcotics comes from the Greek word that means to sleep. In Texas, the number one reason for the state medical board to restrict physicians' medical license concerns their use of opioid medications and more licenses are restricted or revoked regarding this issue than any other. Next, avoid food triggers. People with migraine may have their own individual foods that seem to set off their headaches, and the subject of food triggers is a controversial still poorly researched subject. Common food triggers are alcohol, chocolate, aged cheeses, MSG, and red wine. And if you know a certain foods are a problem for you, well, don't eat them. See my article on food triggered migraine on the web page. Eat regular balanced meals. Basing your diet primarily on fruits, vegetables, <clears throat> excuse me, whole grains, lean protein, and healthy fats. And limiting foods that trigger an attack is a good way to prevent migraines and our headaches. Also, do not skip meals. Skipping meals means your hungry headaches can come on and will trigger a migraine. Um, I also had a list here on this of an article published in a journal 
by Dr. Kelman, in which he's talking about the migraine triggers. He has a whole list of them there, and you can see that if you go to the web page. But the number one trigger for migraine is always stress. So at the top of the page, Dr. Kelman lists 79% of patients had stress was the cause. Hormones were next in women, 65, not eating, 57. Weather, 53%. Way down at the bottom was exercise, sexual activity, and stuff like that. The other thing you can do is check bare mouth your pressure changes aggravating migraine. There are scientific articles verifying that migraine attacks with chain comes with changes in bare mouth your pressure. I think this has been established, <clears throat> although the reason for the attacks and how pressure affects the brain is really not well understood. Or I don't understand it. I can't figure it out. I don't think there's much research on that. Modern cell phones or computers, though, can report current barometric pressure changes for where you live. If you get attacks with barometric pressure changes, then keep a pressure diary and watch out for a migraine that may occur then. Migraineurs may pre-treat with a tryptin for some attacks. That may be helpful. So what do you do when a migraine does start? This is all a list of do's here. Treat early with a tryptin when a migraine starts. Find a cool, dark, quiet space. Get off TV or your cell phone. Rest your eyes. Relax. Deep breathing from your diaphragm can help you relax. Focus on inhaling and exhaling slowly. Think positively. Learn how to deal with a migraine interruption in your day. Learn CBT skills. Think this thought. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's just a migraine. Keep a migraine diary. There's several free cell phone apps for migraine. I have a blog report on that also. Patients can plot uh, life issues on their migraine a apps, things like menstruation, weather change, stress, missed meals, occurrence at night, or a wake-up headache. And then they look back at that over a period of time, and you may see patterns occurring that you can avoid. Migraineers should carefully study any trigger that seems important and recurrent. Living with migraines is a daily challenge, but making healthy lifestyle choices can help. Ask your friends and loved ones for support and advice. Pray to God for help with your life and your health. So this is the end of my talk on the do's and don'ts of migraine management. I hope it's been helpful to you. Thanks for listening to me. I'll see you again on the next talk. Please click on like down there. Thanks a lot. Bye.